The first type of tracking is called point object tracking. For this type, we have at most one detection per object per time step. At most one means that we either get no detection or a single detection. And in object tracking literature, this is often called the point object assumption. So we can uh, have a look at a simple illustration. We have an autonomous vehicle. It has a forward facing sensor with a field of view illustrated by this circular segment. And in the field of view of the sensor, there are two vehicles. In point object tracking, we get at most one detection. So here, this is illustrated by one of the vehicles being detected and the other is not detected. One example of point object tracking is the example that we've looked at previously. Objects are detected in images. Another example is aerospace surveillance using radar. In fact, radar used for aerospace surveillance is an application that has been very common historically. And a lot of object tracking literature assumes point object tracking. The second type of tracking is called extended object tracking. In this case, it is still possible that we get no detections for an object, but there can also be more than one detection per object. So let's consider this simple illustration scenario again. In extended object tracking, we have multiple detections per vehicle. And that means that in extended object tracking, it is possible to use the multiple detections to estimate the object's extent, in addition to the position and motion parameters. And by extent, we typically mean the shape and the size of the object. So if we look at the vehicle on the left in this illustration, we see that the five detections approximately form an L shape. The size of this L shape is related to the length and the width of the vehicle. And we can use the multiple detections to estimate the length and the width of the vehicle. If we consider instead the vehicle on the right, we only have two detections and there are no detections located on either the left side or the right side of the vehicle. And in this case, we cannot estimate the length of the vehicle, but we can estimate the width. So some examples of extended object tracking scenarios are when LiDAR sensors are used or when automotive radar sensors are used. The third type of tracking is called group object tracking. For this type, we have several objects that are treated as a single entity, a group object. Often each member of the group can be detected in the sensor data, and therefore there is a possibility of multiple detections per group. So one example of group object tracking is shown here on the right. So a camera was positioned overlooking a footpath and uh, pedestrians were detected in the image data. A ground plane projection of the detections is shown in the top image from a top-down perspective or bird's eye view. Also shown are the group estimates visualized as ellipses. And each ellipse is meant to encircle the members of the group. And the numbers printed next to each group is the number of detections that we expect from that group. And in the bottom image, the elliptical group estimates have been projected into the image and are visualized as elliptical cylinders. So as you can see, the single individual on the left of the image is also given a group estimate. So in this particular example, group is given a fairly broad interpretation, where a single person is still considered a group, albeit with a single group member. Group tracking can be applied to many different sensors and in many different scenarios. It could, for example, be that we are able to track individual objects, but we are more interested in studying group behavior, and therefore we track groups rather than individual objects. Alternatively, it could be the case that it is not possible to discern the individual objects, and we are therefore forced to track groups. The fourth type of tracking is called tracking with multipath propagation. Again, we have a possibility of multiple measurements per object. In this case, it's due to a phenomenon that is called multipath propagation. And what this means is illustrated using examples on this slide. We have over the horizon radar and tracking using automotive radar. A short explanation of over the horizon radar 
is that the radar signal transmitted by the ship on the right reflects off of different layers in the atmosphere, illustrated here by the dashed curves. It is therefore possible to reach objects that are located below the horizon and are not in direct line of sight. A second example of tracking with multipath propagation is vehicle tracking using automotive radar. Here, the radar signal is reflected off of the road surface and then hits, for example, the undercarriage of the vehicle. In this way, we get a radar detection. However, it's not the closest point of the object that we detect, which in this case would be the back of the vehicle. And then the last type of tracking that we're going to discuss is called tracking with unresolved objects. In this type of tracking, we can have multiple objects per detection. In other words, it's possible that multiple objects cause a single detection. And one example where this can happen is vehicle tracking with automotive radar. Here we have an autonomous vehicle that is traveling on a highway, uh, and this highway has multiple lanes going in the same direction. So in front of the autonomous vehicle, there are two cars that travel at approximately the same speed right next to each other. In such a scenario, it sometimes happens that the detector only gives a single detection for the two vehicles, and that this detection is located in between the two vehicles, as illustrated here. This phenomenon is also called tracking with merged measurements. The radar signal reflects off of both vehicles. However, in the detector, the reflected signal energies become merged, and the detector only gives a single detection for the two vehicles. So, we have discussed the following. Point object tracking, extended object tracking, group object tracking, tracking with multipath propagation, and lastly, tracking with unresolved measurements. In this course, we're going to focus on the first type, which is point object tracking. Here we have at most one measurement per object, that is, each object is either not detected at all or detected by one measurement. The other four types of tracking are outside the scope of this course. The point object tracking that we teach in the course, however, can be generalized in a straightforward way to the other types of tracking. So note that extended object tracking, group object tracking, and tracking with multipath propagation all involve multiple detections per object. However, the modeling requirements within these different types of tracking are different. And lastly, tracking with unresolved or merged measurements involve multiple objects per detection.